Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I've been asked by many people on my Facebook page about the ORE examination. So I thought rather than doing an educational mnemonic video today, I will be giving a more informative video about the ORE examination. So I hope you find the video useful. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. So let's get cracking. So what does ORE stand for? ORE is the acronym and stands for Overseas Registration Exam. Why do you have to do the ORE examination? Well, dentists who hold any non-UK primary dental qualification that is not recognized as an overseas diploma or relevant European diploma will be required to pass the ORE exam before they're able to register with the GDC. How much does it cost to sit the ORE exam? Well, the ORE exam is done in two parts. Part one, which is approximately 800 pounds and part two, which can be approximately, which is approximately 3000 pounds. You can also resit the medical emergency exam on its own if required. And this is approximately 300 pounds. How soon do I have to do the exams? Once you've passed part one, it is important that the ORE part two is done within five years of sitting part one. Where do I do the exam? Part one is run by King's College London and part two is run by a consortium group and the four components of the exam are held at separate venues in London. How many attempts can I have at each part? Candidates are allowed up to four attempts at each part of the ORE. If you fail either part one or part two of the exam four times, you will not be given the opportunity to sit the exam again. So what is the syllabus of part one ORE? Well, there are basically two computer-based exams for part one of the ORE. Paper A covers the clinically applied dental sciences and the clinically applied human disease, very similar to what you may have covered in your preclinical years as a dental student. Paper B covers most of the aspects of clinical dentistry, including law and ethics and health and safety. What does part two of the ORE exam cover? Well, part two of the ORE exam is comprised of four components. This is mostly a clinical based exam and the four components include an operative test on a dental mannequin, an OSCE based exam, a diagnostic and treatment planning exercise, and a practical examination involving dental emergencies. So the operative test on a dental mannequin is where a candidate will be required to perform a certain number of procedures, usually three procedures over three hours. This can include the preparation and restoration of teeth, cutting a class to cavity, basically carrying out a procedure. An OSCE, you may have carried out an OSCE as an undergraduate dental student. Well, this is basically where there's a series of stations which test the clinical skills of the student. This might include history taking, taking an assessment, interpreting radiographs, carrying out consent, doing treatment planning, judgment and decision making exercises, ethics and law, clinical examination. And each series of stations will cover a wide range of aspects of the examination. This can include human disease, law and ethics and professionalism, clinical dentistry, pediatric dentistry, orthodontics, preventative dentistry, oral pathology, oral medicine, oral microbiology, dental radiology, imaging, restorative dentistry. A diagnostic and treatment planning exercise is also part of the component of the ORE part two. And this basically involves an actor who will provide an appropriate history, but will not be examined together with all the relevant medical history and photographs, radiographs, study models, and other tests that may be required. And this will basically allow you to use your deductive skills in order to reach a particular diagnosis and provide a treatment plan or treatment options for that particular patient. There's also a practical examination component in medical emergencies. And this is basically consists of a structured a scenario based oral exam. And also you have to be able to be show yourself as being proficient in basic life support. And this will include carrying out CPR on a resuscitation mannequin. So what do I revise for the ORE exam? I cannot revise all my undergraduate. Well, you're not expected to remember everything from your undergraduate years, but you have to be able to demonstrate a certain degree of proficiency and competency to be able to pass the ORE examination and therefore being able to show a good level of knowledge in your in your preclinical sciences is very, very important, as well as evidence of showing 
how good you are clinically and the knowledge that you possess is also very vital in part two of the ORE examination. Another question that was asked was, can you get some kind of exemptions if you've done the MFDS or any other diplomas? Unfortunately, no exemption for candidates who have completed the MFDS or any other membership diplomas. A lot of people ask, when can they apply for the exam? Well, you can apply for the exam throughout the year as there are no closing dates, but being selected for the exam is a bit like a lottery and there is quite a long waiting list. Applicants should be expected to be academically and financially registered to the exam at the time of the application, as there is quite a bit of a financial commitment. You must also have all the documents required to sit the examination and being able to submit this as part of your application. Which documents do you have to submit? Well, well you need a clinical reference. Uh, it must be a written reference onto the application form and signed in person by the referee and should not be usually sent as a separate document. You should have an original certificate of current professional status that must be no long older than three months. You must have good evidence of knowledge of the English language. You must have a certified copy of your primary dental degree, a certified copy of your current valid passport, will require a passport size photograph. Another question that was very commonly asked, do you need to submit all your health documents? Well, the ORE does not involve a test on a real patient, so applicants for the ORE do not have to submit any health documents for the purpose of sitting the exam. Once you have passed the ORE exam, then this will be required as a proof of health when GDC registration is being carried out. What kind of English proficiency is required? Well, I mentioned before the English language proficiency, and this is normally evidenced by the IELTS exam or recent primary dental qualification that has been taught and examined in English. The duration of the application can take up to about 30 days. Once the GDC receive your application, they will process it and make sure that all the checks are satisfactory and complete. So the ORE is actually very well streamlined and so candidates can usually complete the whole process within about 6 to 12 months. So if you, for example, pass your each exam at the first attempt, normally you can get registration within 6 to 12 months. The issue is that part two has a very large number of candidates on the waiting list and so there's not always a guarantee that you'll be placed on the exam. From time to time, it may be necessary to limit the number of candidate attempts over a period of 6 to 12 months in order to allow other candidates on the list. The chance to book an exam place. How long does it take to be placed on the part one ORE exam once your application has been processed? Well, again, part one exam is available for booking once you become eligible, but there's no guarantee that a place will become available as there may be a waiting list for other candidates. This follows on to the next question, how are places allocated? Well, the GDC does not allocate places on the exam to particular candidates. The only exception to this are candidates approaching their five-year limit. So if you've nearly reached the expiry date, then GDC usually prioritize these candidates. Each candidate on the waiting list will be informed by email. So it's important that you give the right email keeper a regular watch on your email. All exams are usually booked on a first come first served basis. When do you need to pay for the exam fee? Well, payment of the full exam fee is required at the time of the booking. If I fail, can I appeal against my result? Currently, the GDC does not accept any application for appeals against academic judgment. What courses are available that will help me with my ORE examination? Well, if you look at our channel, we provide a lot of learning material for our candidates and we provide a range of mnemonic that are covered in the syllabus. It's also important that you have a visa before you are able to sit the exam. The GDC will not advise on visas. So candidates are usually responsible for ensuring that they are permitted to the UK to take the exam. If, for example, if you've made a payment for the examination and unable to obtain a visa, your fees usually will be lost. So it's your responsibility that you obtain a visa before you make a payment for the examination. What are my working options whilst I am waiting for the ORE. Well, to practice in the UK, you must be probably registered. Some ORE candidates have an option of temporary registration, but these are posts which are usually supervised within hospitals, and there's usually a very high demand for these posts. Once you have passed your ORE examination, if you want to work within the NHS, you'll be required to have a performance number. In order to get onto the performance list, you will require a period of mentoring by a NHS dentist, and will be required to complete the PLVE which, which is a year-long training and you have to be able to fulfill a number of competencies during that year to be able to qualify for your performer number. Well, thank you very much for listening. If you benefited from the video, please kindly like and subscribe and share the video so that others may benefit. Thank you very much indeed. See you soon.